you. So point number one is do you. And point number two, when getting a new piece, is to remember they don't know you. This part involves when you re-encounter your past. Because just because you say peace to your past pain and people and struggles the first time doesn't mean that you'll never see your past again. After everything that Joseph had been through, after everything that he had endured, none of his brothers could recognize him when they saw him as an adult. He had to actually tell them who he was before they could get him. And it seems that they couldn't recognize him for a few reasons. One, so much time had passed. Two, they didn't know where to expect him to show up. And three, he was in a position that they couldn't imagine that he'd be in. And it's the same thing with us. It takes time to become someone new. And your past will not know what you're up to when you get there. Presuming you're not putting all your business on Facebook. When saying peace to the past and getting a new peace, this will always happen. Be prepared for your past to not recognize you when they see you again. Either they will be looking for the old you and not recognize the new you, or they will be looking for a new you. But if you have a change, they won't be recognizing the old you either. Either way, your past will not be able to completely recognize who you are now. This does not bother Joseph, and it should not bother us. I think my second year of preaching at Messiah, those of you that don't know Queens, New York, and from my second year, I believe it was, I was here on a youth Sunday, and I'm preaching, and there was a girl I had passed in the hall uh, who came with another young lady to the church, and she sat in the service, and I remember staring at her during the service, just trying to figure out this face looks really familiar. I couldn't remember where I knew her from. And she couldn't remember where she knew me from. And I preached that day. Well, somewhere around the end of service, it finally clicked who she was. It was an ex-girlfriend from when I was 13. <laughs> and not Saying peace to the past and getting 
a new piece. So point one is, do you. And point two is, they don't know you. Point three is, look at what God can do. I don't know the explanation is still necessary. Let's look at how Joseph said peace. In a situation in which his brother was extremely nervous because they thought they were in trouble, not only did he give his brother, who was nervous at that time, a short pair prayer for, pre for peace, when he said, peace be to you. But he also said, not when his brother was leaving him, but when his brother was meeting him. <laughs> see, it's a lot easier to wish peace to your past when they're leaving, or you don't have to see them anymore. But to pray them peace when you meet your past involves an entirely different process. See, peace originally was not something you said when you said goodbye. Peace was something that you said when you met. In most of us, if most of us met the people who caused us the most pain right now, a small prayer of peace for their life and worries would not be the first thing that would pop into your head. We may wish for a lot of things for them, but peace may not make the list. But Joseph shows us how to break that rule, because Joseph understood that the way to get a new peace is to look at what God can do. Listen to what Joseph says to his brothers in chapter 45, verses 4 through 8. I'll be reading a version of a New Living Translation. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer. And he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. Go down to verse 8. So it was God who sent me here, not you. And he is the one who made me an advisor to Pharaoh, the manager of his entire palace and the governor of all Egypt. Joseph can say peace to his past because he realized that God used his problems to give him a promotion. Because he realized that if they didn't mess him up, then he wouldn't be hooked up here. We need to know. Understand that Joseph did not get himself into any of his issues. First thing I need to recognize, Joseph did not get himself into these problems. They were all done to him. Most of us are not in that same boat. We get ourselves into our problems. But the good thing is, when you give God your life and accept Jesus as your Savior, God can take the mess up that you've already committed and that have trapped you and begin using them for a breakout Second thing I need you to know is that Joseph has reached a point of blessings where he can look back and see things clearly. Most of us are not in that boat either, where you can look back after you've accomplished everything and look back. Most of us are not there. We're still in the middle of the process. But I want to encourage you to look at who you are today compared to who you should have been if your problems would have won. To my youth, to my adults who are still going through it, don't let your struggle blind you to where you came from, where you made it out of, who you escaped from, and what you should lose. Because some of you have brothers and sisters that are messed up the way you could have been messed up. Some of you have family that has lost the way you could have been lost. Some of you have friends that are struggling the way you could have been struggling. Some of you have associates that are sick the way you could have been sick. And some of you have loved ones who have given up the way you could have given up. Those are your reminders. So even though you may be in the middle of this roller coaster ride called life, you can still give God thanks because even though you can't see where you're going, you know where you came from. You're a way to say, I may not be the man I want to be, but thank God I'm not the man that I was. That's why Joseph can say peace to his past because he understood, number one, do you. He understood that they don't know you. And number three, he understood to look at what God can do. See, once you realize that God got your back a 
along the way, you get a new piece, uh, a, a real piece of peace that helps you get over the spite and the disdain, the depression and the dismay. And you discover that with your new peace, you can say peace to your past. The minute you see your past, the minute they come back, the minute that situation shows up, you can pray for a little peace for your past. Because we can realize that they didn't do it, God did it. Now see this in 2020. God didn't kill, rape, molest, or abandon. God didn't do the crime. But God put in and is putting in the time to make sure that it all works out for the best. Some young person, some adult in the house can say peace to the past because I got a new peace. Why? Because God did it. See, this is 2020. God didn't leave the family, destroy the relationship, cause your marriage to fail, or mess you up. God didn't do the crime, but God put in and is putting in the time to make sure that it all works out for the best. Now, during Joseph's time, Jesus has not come in earthly form yet. But in our time, Jesus has already been here. So if Joseph isn't a good example for you, then let me tell you that some hundreds of years ago, there was a man who was betrayed and sentenced to death, but he kept on doing him. People called him names and made fun of him while he was dying on the cross because they didn't know him. But even while Say peace, because Jesus did it. Yeah.